What's up, everybody? And uh, we got some questions rolling in. We're gonna answer some questions from fans, friends, anybody. We've been doing this for a while, but we never put it out. So um, this is coming in via Facebook, which is Kyle J. Almeida on Facebook. Um, Kill Kyle J. on Instagram at Kill Kyle J. I don't fucking know. I'm a weirdo. Um, Alright, so the first question. Hey, Bubby. Hey, Bubby. <laughs> Alright, the first question is Carolyn asks, What's your thoughts on the current state of hip hop rap? Which, um, right now, without. It's hard to not sound like a hater on that subject. Uh, I mean, I definitely applaud some people that are really creative right now. I, I, I respect creativity. There's many spectrums of creativity. And I really can't say much without offending certain genres of it. I just like more, my style is more conscious stuff. Action Bronson, J. Cole, um, Kendrick, Joey Badass, uh, Chance the Rapper. That's more my realm right now, you know? I mean, there are some certain things from like Young Thug and like shit like that. Like I like because it's catchy, but that's what I fuck with right now. And the current state, I think, is being revived by. I think the old school is coming more incorporated into it. That's what I'm saying. I, th I think there's a chance for it to be what it used to be, you know. So that's my thoughts on that. And I mean, I can go on for another hour about that shit, but I'll spare you guys the commentary on that one. All right, so thank you for that question, by the way. That was a very good question. And the next question, Lady Slipper Latch. Grew up with you as well. Do you think music has the ability to alter one's perception on life? If so, do you think artists have or should have responsibility to the community, families, creator, etc.? Very good question. I've never really had a question like that. And that's more my type of answer. As far as that, yeah, it definitely, I think music can have an effect on one's life. Definitely, it depends what type of um, realm you're in. It, de it depends on the listener. You know, it depends on what the listener's personal experience is. You know, if you're a kid growing up in the hood and all you see is drugs and, and guns and violence and there's two ways it can affect you. The positive stuff can uplift you to get out of it or, I mean, I didn't mean positive, I'm saying that type of shit can uplift you. Or the other type, which is to embrace your surroundings and make that money and, and embrace that type of lifestyle. It's definitely something that affects, has an effect on your life. That, especially if you don't have nobody to listen to or a mentor. All you have is the music, because the music is just around you, it surrounds you. If you don't have the parents or, or a mentor, it definitely... That's around there. You hear it at every radio, so or on every TV. That's definitely something that affects people's lives. Definitely. And as for the second part of the question, if the artists have the responsibility to their community, their families, a creator, etc., it depends on the artist. It depends on that artist's beliefs and their morals. I mean about to get the money some people do just for that money and say fuck everybody else some people really have an attachment to their communities and their families and want to inflict that in a positive way so i think it's a 50 50 i think there's different type of artists so that's definitely a yes and a no on that and that's thank you for that question that one is something i like to talk about i appreciate that that's my girl uh latch right there next question we're back um okay sean lewis <laughs> Do you think Sean Michael Lewis is handsome? Nigga, I mean, do you, son? A new country, B. Rainbow on the face, son. It's all good. You're a handsome dude, huh? Whatever. Uh, my nigga. Um, next one from Kill Hillman. What are the meanings behind some of your tattoos? Never heard that shit before. Uh, most of them, religious. I mean, you know, I grew up with that faith. My mama taught me faith, and I got them a lot young. And I still stand by every single one of them. And I'll never get something without meaning. So, mostly religious or just um, empowering shit. Positive shit. Thank you for your question. Next one. Back from Lady Slipper. 
What does your playlist look like and who do you think had major influence on not only your music career but your overall style? That's a good question. My first CD I ever listened to was from Nas, uh, Illmatic. So Nas was definitely my first influence on rap, 100%. Uh, Big L, just that punchline, punchline, punchline stuff. So. That's where I got most of it from, you know. So, I mean, that was the very beginning of it. So, there's that. Noah Taylor says, How much harder has it been trying to connect with people and network coming from around here? And have people take your hip-hop serious without judging you for not trying to come up from an inner-city atmosphere? That is a crazy question. Like, in a good way. So, I don't think it's hard to connect. I mean, the internet gives you the power to reach no matter where you are. I don't think I've used it correctly in, in my past so far with trying to figure out that formula. But I don't think, um, I think wherever the fuck you are, you know what I'm saying? You're at the touch of a button, you can be in China. You know what I'm saying? So, as far as that goes, um, to be taken seriously from Cape Cod or not inner city, it's a little tougher, I think. You know, um, it's a little bit tougher. But depends on your, your content and your hustle. You know, so things are changing. Music is changing, period. You know, people are respecting and accepting every genre from anywhere. So it's all on your own hustle, really. So Sprint, I can't even get to your questions, so Bip has to read them off the computer. Go ahead, my man. Ralph Larkin says, what's your favorite Ooh, hi, norm, non-pornographic magazine to masturbate to? Good question, buddy. I'd have to say... Two. Maxim? Who? Maxim is close. I mean, you have to undress him with your mind because it's not nudity. That's a good one. Um, or Forbes, man. Some of those boats. Some of those cars. Shit. I'll definitely, I'll get off to that. For real. It's true fact. Sorry. Robert. Yes, Robert. You're my homie. I miss you, brother. You have helped me through my career as much as you could. You got a kid now. Growing up shit. <laughs> yes. Dennis Fernandes asks, how do you feel knowing that you can verbally destroy at least half of the rappers today? It's a good feeling. It's a great feeling. I'd like to get to three quarters one day. You know what I'm saying? But, um... But my homie Nick Colombo says, hey, can I get an autograph? And hey, I never asked you, do you like guacamole? Uh, that's it. Fuck you, spit. Shit. <laughs> I'm done here. Next segment. Staring down the barrel level 45, mortified, real niggas overlooked, fake niggas glorified. The block's hot enough to burn a fucking corpse alive. Four or five boys inside the tour bus, snoring lines. I'm tired of being borderline. Broke counting quarters, dimes, and nickels for a Big Mac. Still